Um, first of all, thanks a bunch for having me. I'm super excited to be here. This is actually my first time in Ukraine, and I had lots of interesting conversations yesterday. Enjoyed all of them. A bit about myself, I'm, um, as I already got introduced, Tim. I work in Google's developer relations team, and my team's role is making sure developers all across the globe actually have fun using Google's products. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a UI toolkit that I'm super passionate about. Flutter is an SDK that we released th last, uh, this year at uh, Google I.O. We released the alpha. We've been talking about it ever since. And Flutter really, for me, as somebody who's been working with uh, both the web and Android, is something that makes developing really amazing again. So today, I hope I share some of my passion with you as well. So what is Flutter? As I mentioned before, Flutter is an SDK. And the beauty of using Flutter is it allows for building high-performing mobile applications. And by doing so, you don't just target one platform, but you actually build for both Android and iOS at the same time. The beauty of Flutter is it's completely open source. So if you go to github.com slash Flutter, you can literally see what we're working on. You can engage with the team that is building Flutter, and you can actually contribute. And that is something that we already highly welcome. There is a very amazing public mailing list where you can engage with the team, and you can help us actually prioritize what we should be focusing on in the next few months ahead. And as I mentioned before, Flutter currently is in alpha, which means in Google terms, it is already really, really good, and people internally use it already. Um, so for instance, Google's internal sales team uses that for their sales mobile tool. But certain features might be missing. And I'm going to talk about that later in my talk as well. And the beauty is, a lot of those toolkits that we as developers often work with only are relevant for us as developers. But truth is, being a mobile developer often wor uh, encompasses working with designers, working with prototypers, working with a large team of people that really care about creating cutting-edge experiences for your users. So what happens with Flutter is we can actually involve designers very early on. We can involve prototypers by having very fast iteration cycles, making sure they, they become productive in weeks instead of months of having to get used to SDKs and frameworks. And then finally, develop, uh, developers really, really love the deep integrations with IDEs. We use IntelliJ. Um, there is support for Dart for many other um, text editors and IDEs, but IntelliJ is our go-to platform. And we feature a very rich set of widgets that can be extended, that can be customized, and that can be built upon to create amazing, beautiful applications. And by doing that, it really frees your time to build applications that are fun to use again. So let me show you what Flutter actually really is. So since a few days, we don't just support uh, IntelliJ. Since Android Studio Preview 0.7 for version 3, we also support Flutter in Android Studio. And what I'm going to show you is some fun that I can have with the platform here. So I'm just going to start the Android emulator. And what we do is we have a very simple example where I can show you the so-called gallery. Let's wait for the emulator to actually work. <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go. Awesome. So if you want to play around with Flutter, you can actually go to the Play Store right now and download the Flutter Gallery application. And what you will see over here is we have a very, set, a very rich set of samples that show you how beautiful UIs are that you can build with Flutter. So let's do that. Wow, oh, it's really not responsive. <laughs> there we go. So Pesto is one of those sample applications that we have. And as you can see, 
while it actually uses material design and it looks beautiful, it also encompasses design and a company brand, which really is what we were aiming for with material design all the time. So, yeah, let's, let me just restart the emulator while I continue talking and I'll show you the stuff later. All right, I'll get back to this in a second. So two things today that I would like to talk about are both the developer experience and how we actually enable high-performing mobile applications. So developer experience obviously matters because as a day-to-day -day developer, I only have so much time to concentrate on building great apps that are fun to use and that I can actually really be proud of. And we do that by having a design-oriented development flow. So if you ask the question, what do you see here to both designers and developers, chances are high you will get very different results. If I look at this as a developer, I see widgets. I focus on stuff like padding, I focus on functionality, I think about listeners that look for different events that might be happening. If I look through this as a designer, I obviously think about beautiful imagery, making sure my de uh, text displays probably, and all these other things. With Flutter, we can bring together developers very early on with the designers, making sure that we avoid confusion when they talk to each other, and that there is no more frustration because they can cooperate very early on. And what we do over here is we kind of simplified how layouts really work on mobile. So if you look at the sample that I just showed you before, you will actually realize we have a bunch of different columns that are simply just items below each other, like the title text, like the image, and the big text at the bottom. Plus, we have a bunch of different rows. So we can try to go from the biggest elements to the smallest elements, and try to understand in which relation they stand to each other. Once we've done that, and we've kind of diagrammed the layout out, we can actually break it down into the smaller pieces. So on the left side, you can see the title screen that I've talked about. And again, it is literally columns and rows that interact with each other. You can see the title section has three children, with an icon, a text, and obviously the title of the location itself. And on the right side, the buttons are again rows and columns. So it is very easy for me to build these uh, UIs because I very much focus on creating these smaller bits and pieces first and then afterwards compositing them into a larger, beautiful UI. If you're familiar with HTML and CSS, you can actually feel like there is a certain relation to it. But with Flutter, we actually bring design and the actual code, the actual layout together to make sure it is actually easy to build these experiences. So let's talk about tooling. So tooling for Flutter is something that we're really proud of. And um, I'm going to hopefully show you a few things that really stress my point over here. So first of all, the CLI of Flutter is amazing. If you ever want to upgrade your Flutter installation in your project or your uh, global Flutter installation, you can use Flutter Upgrade. You can use Flutter Doctor whenever things go wrong. So if you want to check that your SDK is set up as it's supposed to be, just type in Flutter Doctor, everything is great. If you happen to run into a bug, type in Flutter Doctor and it helps you analyzing what's going wrong. It makes sure all your path variables are set up, the tool chain is set up, the emulators are set up, so that you actually don't have to worry about these things anymore. If you want to deal with different packages or if you want to declare images or other resources, like for instance fonts in your project, you go to the pubspec file and what you do over there is you simply declare them. So in this case, you can see I have a Flutter project that uses Firebase authentication. And Firebase 
is already uh, supported with Flutter Fire. And, and you can see, in my case, I want to make sure I really use that one certain version of Firebase authentication because that's what I've tested for. You can also, obviously, define a more fluid way saying everything between 0 0.1.2 up to version 0.2 is what I'm fine working with. And that's you're pretty much all you have to do. So afterwards, you just say Flutter packages get. It makes sure your environment is set up. It makes sure it retrieves all the needed packages. And if you use uh, packages upgrade, it just makes sure it retrieves the latest version of the package that you're working with. Same goes for a few other very relevant things. Flutter is based on Dart. And Dart, as a language, obviously has its own code style. So we allow you to format your code automatically using Flutter format. And this is obviously also integrated in IntelliJ. And if you want to make sure you find different mistakes in your code, you want to analyze what's going wrong, just type in Flutter Analyze, and it helps you doing that. Again, completely integrated into the IDE. And probably one of my favorite features about Flutter is working with Hot Reload. Hot Reload is, if you're an Android developer, a feature that allows to simply execute updates to your application code without having to restart the app over and over again. So if you think about that, that allows me to quickly iterate over different functionalities that I want to test. It allows me to try out different UIs without having to go through every app screen state that I've been working with. And the beauty is, app state is always retained. So let's see if the emulator actually allows for a demo now. So I have a simple demo app over here. I'm just going to execute that. So you can see it's actually packaging the application right now, making sure it actually compiles into native Android code. Should be ready in a second. There we go, it's installing. And should be firing up in a couple of seconds. There we go. All right, so you can see I have a very simple application over here. And I literally just count how many times I click this button. So let's do that. I click on it four times, five times. That's good, right? But now I actually realize I have a typo in here. So instead of saying you have clicked the button this many times, I want to say you have touched the button this many times. So now I'm going to save. You can see it initializes, and it says touched instead. I can do the same thing with the color theme. So if I realize that floating action button at the bottom of my UI should actually be blue, all I do is I simply type in blue, I save, and it's done. Think about how, how amazing this is. Now, obviously, it might be that I actually do a mistake and I have a typo or so. So let me do that. I save. I have an error. Let me actually find some nice error over here. My app crashed. So let me fix that. Again, I save. It still says five times. Think about how much productivity this gives you back on your day-to-day -day life. Honestly, I've been looking for this so long. So that is already hot reloading, and I hope you enjoy this feature as much as I do. The beauty of this is I can actually start extending my UI I simply save, 
and it just happens, right? So think about trying out if the button should be on the left side or right side, if the image should be bigger or not. All these things suddenly become very easy to do. And that's how I mentioned before, developers and designers suddenly have amazing grounds to cooperate. So this is hard reload. Sometimes hard reload is not going to do it though. If you deal with global variable initializers or if you want to modify the main method of your application, then you will have to go through a full application restart. But the beauty of this is your debugging session is actually not going to end. So if you want to test certain things, you don't actually have to reconnect to the debugger and try out things again. So hot reload and full application restarts really sort out your whole application testing and setup tool chain. There's also the observatory. So if you really want to get into the means of how many objects are uh, allocated, which lines of codes have executed, um, how the memory allocations really work like, you can do that either, of course, through your IDE, or whenever you actually type in Flutter Run, Flutter actually spawns the Dart Observatory, which is a website running on your local machine that helps you debugging your application. So you know all the time what's going on. I really love this feature. Now, I talked about beautiful apps, and beautiful and apps are obviously enabled by having great looking widgets. So let's look into that. So all these widgets and apps that you see over here are demo apps built with Flutter. We aim for high performance, which means we aim for 60 frames per second, and we do everything to help you actually achieving that. So making sure these experiences are actually possible is actually not that daunting of a task. In Flutter, everything you see, every element on screen, is in fact a widget. So that means no matter if it's a text or a divider or something like that, it's all a widget. And you can composite them and build upon each other to create the experiences that you want to achieve. And composition really means you can extend widgets. I'm going to show you that in a second. You can rearrange them and you can really make sure they work for you as you please. Flutter actually doesn't have a global layout system. Every layout has its own local layout. Every widget relies on its own information. So if you want to center text, you literally wrap the text widget in a center widget and that's all. If you are actually somebody who deals with front-end development, you know how hard it can be to center elements on screen. If you ever tried actually getting a button, both on the horizontal and vertical axis of your screen, it's really fun. If you Google for that, you find thousands of different answers trying to solve that. With Flutter, that's actually not an issue. Same actually goes for things like padding. So if I want to make sure I have eight pixels on the left side and eight pixels on the right side. I simply wrap my text in padding and that's it. And that seems like a new way to approach it, but it really opens up possibilities for you to not having to deal with things like flagging certain elements as important, overriding global styles and all these other things. There are two different widget types that we work with. Stateful widgets are obviously widgets that can change in state, like inputs, like buttons. Did I press the button or not? And if so, what is the current state of that button? Every time the button state changes, the widget state changes, set change is called, and you can interact with that. You can update the UI, you can make sure your app actually gives that feedback the user needs. If you have different elements, like for instance text, that is not going to change throughout the whole life cycle of your app. Stateless widget is what you're going to aim for. So those are immutable uh, widgets that simply display and that's it. 
I t I've talked about extensibility before. So if I want to create things like a raised button in my UI that's more visible, all I do is I simply extend the widget and I do so. If you're coming from a Java background and you've worked with Android, you're pretty much familiar with this. But for lots of people that actually come from the web, this is really mind-blowingly easy because you can start combining widgets out of lots of smaller widgets. You can rearrange them and make sure they work for you. And that all is possible because of the architecture that Flutter is built on. And this is where Flutter is actually very special. So the engine of Flutter is completely written in C++. And you can see that we brought a few different things over here that help us achieving performance, tooling, and all the other needs that we have. The Skia is the 2D engine that actually runs Android. So all the uh, canvas work that you want to do is enabled by Skia, and that allows us to effectively render on Vulkan or OpenGL. So Flutter, all Flutter really needs is a nice surface it can render on, and that's it. Dart is a language that we at Google use a lot. It's actually one of the uh, languages within Google that's rising most in popularity. And it is made for reliability, for efficiency, for be enabling developers to build apps that are just really performant. And the text engine is actually also borrowed from Chrome because if you think about working with text, it is actually really hard dealing with left to right and right to left, parsing date formats and all these other things. It is actually not that easy to display text. So the engine borrows from the best things that we have at Google. And then if you go up, you will actually see that we also have our own renderer. And that enables us to do a lot of amazing things. So you will see Flutter actually comes with its own widgets. And then upon that layer, you have more opinionated widgets, Material and Cupertino, so the Android and iOS style widgets that are obviously more opinionated. So going from bottom to top, you will see every layer builds upon the other layer and starts being more and more opinionated about how things should be working. As somebody who deals with Android and iOS, I obviously understand that there is a whole ecosystem of different libraries that you still want to use, or there are certain uh, features of the platform that Flutter might not support yet. So how do we do that? So we have a feature that we call platform channels that allow for very easily working with the native side of your application, so Android and iOS. You can work with Java or Kotlin code on Android, or Swift and Objective-C on the iOS side to effectively invoke other functions. And the beauty of that is if you've ever worked with Android and you fired an intent and actually then listened and waited for the result, that's exactly how it works with Flutter. So let me show you an easy example. In this case, on Android, using Kotlin code, I want to get the uh, local battery level. So how much battery is left on my device? So all I do is I simply extend the Flutter activity and I make sure to invoke the uh, method channel. So in this case, I literally just say, listen to battery updates. And you can see there is both the call and the result. So let's look into that. I just invoke the native method for Android, get battery level. I just make sure I actually get that level. I check that it's actually an a useful result. And what I do is I simply have two methods, success and error, that allows me to like, communicate with the Flutter side. So I don't need to have any other logic up there. It's really simple and enables me to continue using the libraries I love and that I want to be working with. And then finally, all I do is on the uh, Flutter side, I literally just wait for the result. And once that actually happens, I just set the state and I'm fine. I'm good to go again. So it's really, really simple to continue working with features that Flutter might not support yet or with libraries that you really want to use. I mentioned Flutter is optimized for high-performing applications. Reason why is 
Flutter actually compiles the native code. On iOS, we use LLVM to achieve that. And on Android, we actually compile down to ARM code. So for Android, we require you to actually use at least version 16 of Android, Jelly Bean, and an ARM device as a target. On iOS, we require you to work with 64 bits, which is every iPhone starting with uh, the 5S. We actually don't rely on OEM widgets. So all the widgets that you have seen are actually completely built with Flutter. These are all rendered by Flutter, which allows us to make sure everything is pixel, perf uh, pixel perfect and really smooth. We use a technique that is called structural repainting. So every GPU in your device has a very simple operation called bit splitting, which allows to shim uh, simply shift bits from A to B. We use that technique to make sure that if you have, for instance, a list and you want to scroll, we only repaint those objects, those widgets in that list that have, in fact, changed. We use caches and invalidating, and by doing that, we actually achieve a very, very high performance. And then finally, we don't actually use a bridge. So if you work with frameworks like React Native or other mobile frameworks, you might be familiar with JavaScript bridges, which actually interpret the JavaScript that you write and then communicate with the platform. We don't do that. So reactive frameworks on the web have a virtual DOM tree. You work with that. You add your widgets. You do your changes. Then the application side actually compares what changed, communicates with the native side, the actual DOM, and then starts rendering. Same goes for reactive frameworks on mobile. You have your virtual widget tree that you work with. You do your changes. Again, it has to compare. And finally, it's being rendered. And that dotted line that you see over there, that's the bridge. And that's where performance is lost. Because suddenly, all these different updates actually have to go from JavaScript to native code. And that's usually interpreted and takes a long time. The difference with Flutter is, because we have our own renderer, all we do is literally working with a widget tree, no virtual tree and an actual tree. We just make sure things work out on that application side. We render stuff directly on the canvas. And that's why it's really, really fast. And that's because it's super powered by Dart. If you've seen Jana's talk yesterday, she talked about Dart as well. Dart is a beautiful language that allows for a few simple things. It has a very sound type system. We have a tree shaking compiler. If you're familiar with that code elimination, it's the opposite. So instead of checking if code is not being used anymore and going through the tree of your application, we actually go through code that we know is being used and make sure we ask it, what else do you use? What else do you use? And suddenly we actually understand what the optimal uh, allocation should be like. The core libraries of Dart are amazing. They are really, really rich and easy to use. And then finally, important for the uh, performance, we have a multi-generation lockless garbage collector, which is really important because suddenly we deal with a lot of small objects that are being allocated all the time because we scroll through a list or all these other things. So if we want to make sure these widgets are being rendered fluidly, we want to make sure that the newest widgets get all the performance they require. So this allows you to work with a single code base for Android and iOS. It achieves rapid development cycles on both platforms. And as I've shown you with hard reloading, the tool chain, the whole tooling itself is truly amazing. We've worked with a lot of different people and you actually see more and more amazing quotes on the internet saying, oh my God, this is really fluid. Like I achieved 60 FPS and that was actually not an issue. And that is actually better what they have been used by other cross-platform frameworks. Somebody actually said that using Dart and Flutter rekindled the joy of working with mobile development. And that is obviously something that we want to hear. And then finally, Pascal Welch, who spoke at DroidCon, actually said that when working with release applications, the UI is in fact butter smooth. So that is something that we love to hear. 
if you look for very nice sample applications of Flutter apps out there, Hamilton is probably the nicest app that I can recommend you. Hamilton is right now in the States the most popular musical, and they built a so-called lottery app using Flutter. So this way you can actually register to get a ticket for Hamilton, and they literally got featured on both the Android and iOS store. So this is a good sign that people love the experiences, that these are actually rich and fun applications. There's more than 100 apps already running in the Google Play Store using Flutter. We have an amazing ecosystem that you can find on the uh, Dart pub, uh, package directory, pub. And finally, of course, certain things are missing because Flutter is currently in alpha. And while we are working our way towards the beta, you will see that other things are going to appear like proper internationalization support, accessibility, background processing, dealing with maps, dealing with videos, and a few other things that really enable you to build apps. So if you try to decide if you should be using Flutter right now or not, look at the features Flutter already supports. They are all very high quality. And go and talk to us. Come and talk to the team. If you need additional resources, Flutter.io, github.com slash Flutter. Check out these videos I point towards. There are amazing blog posts like the one by Wim Liller. And with that, I would like to talk, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure. And please grab me if you want to talk about it. Thank you.